Welcome back everybody. Today is going to be the second video of 7.36 as there's a lot to look at. There's a lot to talk about. We kind of had our first impressions of the patch yesterday. There's clearly some broken stuff and we're just going to highlight what's happening in the immortal brackets and what I've seen so far in my games. So let's talk about some general changes for the patch. Most notably, I want to talk about preparing for a new patch like this one because it seems like based on what I see in my chat, based on what I see in my games, these are common things that people are forgetting. So first and foremost, this patch is basically Dota 3. They do this maybe once every six months where they just completely change the map, or in this case, they completely change the heroes and don't at all change the map. And there's just kind of a flipped upside down situation. So the first and foremost thing that I want to tell you guys, it may seem simple, but Expect chaos. Expect random shit to be happening in your games. Expect carries. Like, I, I I expect myself to randomly die sometimes playing carry. I literally watched Pure on Tundra, like, rank 3 in professional matches, just randomly dying on creep waves at the start of the patch. And this is just... What I'm trying to say is this is going to happen to everybody. Everybody's really overwhelmed. Everybody's worried about things that their hero didn't used to do, looking at facets of other heroes. And, yeah, with all that being said, embrace chaos. Like, for whatever reason... People on my team, you know, I make one stupid mistake and they're just like, GG, game over. And it's like, I understand, guys. I understand that Dota is a frustrating game. But at a new patch, that's going to happen way more often. So just kind of set that expectation for yourself and be a little bit easier on yourself because that's what's going to happen. So secondly, um, this also has to do with new patches, but it's also a good rule of thumb in general. So the second thing about it is that I think it's much more difficult in general in Dota to understand other heroes in the game. Understanding what they do, their power spikes, how you counterplay them all that kind of stuff. And that's something that applies all the time, but applies even more so in a patch like this, where every hero now has two facets, every hero has like innate passives that some of them are things we've seen before, but some of them are completely new and they change the matchups. Like a CM with an extra 125 cast range later on, like that's going to get you killed sometimes because you weren't thinking she was in range to frostbite you. And these are just random things that are gonna happen because you're not able to think about all the things that have happened in the patch and worry about all the other heroes. So with that being said, my advice and encourage you to do is look at what heroes you think are strong do what i'm about to do go on dota 2 pro tracker look at dota buff win rates and look at heroes that you think are strong try your best to understand why they're strong i'm going to be talking about whatever i can on this channel but focus on what makes your hero strong let's first in the first like week or two of the patch let's first worry about playing the hero that we're playing optimally that's something that i think will really help people from being overwhelmed, feeling like so much is happening at once, and dying to random shit. And I feel like people beat themselves up, they get really upset, they get tilted. But focus on playing your own hero, because it's much more difficult to understand what everyone else's hero does in general, and now in a new patch, even more so the case. So I'm going to be talking about a few of the heroes I've played, Maybe a few of the heroes I've played against or seen that like now that I've had time to kind of like think about what they do, tell you guys about them. So I only played uh, three pups today, but let's talk about exactly what I saw and also looking at Dota 2 Pro Tracker. So this is Dota 2 Pro Tracker for my bracket 17.36 has come out. So what's very clear and obvious is that Leech Commander just as busted in my bracket. That Q, we already talked about it, absolutely insane. Apparently Juggernaut's win rate's not all that great, but I also see him get picked every single game first pick. So what that means is if he's first pick, getting counter picked, 50% win rate at my bracket, go have a heyday in yours. TA, 59% win rate. For the record, real quick. Legion takes the uh, shield passive. Jug, I really like the blade form passive. It's just free agility, free movement speed. Pretty much all game. Maybe it's not all that much, but especially when you're like smoke ganking or getting smoke ganked, you pretty much have like 30 agility and, you know, 10% movement speed. All this stuff really matters. Um, it adds up on a hero that like, also when you're smoke ganking, you swift blink, ult somebody with an extra 25 agility. Um, this kind of stuff just adds up a lot. It's free stats, and I felt like Jug was super powerful in my game. TA, people are taking the shield, gets procced, and it gives you aggro charges of refraction. So she's less defensive, but more offensive. So her matchups are a bit different, but overall, uh, you know, you see here 59% win rate. She has a high win rate at all brackets as well. Tiny carry, 52%. So heroes that are not winners. I have felt Nyx is terrible. Like I said, I wanted to try him because I thought the idea of one-shotting a neutral for Nyx was really strong. But I felt it, lost three of the four games that I've played, and every game it just feels underwhelming because Nyx no longer one-shots you anymore. With the rework to Mind Flare, he just doesn't one-shot you anymore. 
So what made Knicks good, maybe he is good, but whatever makes him good is different than what was good before and people haven't adjusted yet. So going the old Dagon build, let's just not do that anymore. Um, it just doesn't work. I've seen it lose every game. Night Stalker, I've seen it in multiple core roles and I even saw it carry and we lost, but it should have won, to be honest. He went Radiance, it was Skitter. I really liked what Night Stalker did in the game and the facet that makes the game start as nighttime it makes his landing stage just super strong. Zeus, despite all the nerfs that I thought he received, feels really powerful in my games. Still doing like the Manta Shard build, just a lot of damage. Seems to do his job very reliably. Axe is like basically a budget legion. Obviously similar heroes, Taunt plus Blade Mail, but his 60% strength of armor is really strong. And the fact that he just gets armor for kills now, even if he doesn't dunk you, he gets one armor. Don't you gets two. The numbers on these heroes, I think, with their facets are just a bit too high. So really keep in mind these heroes that aren't winning. I know it's a small sample size for now, so we're gonna keep monitoring them. But I've seen Weaver, I've seen Slardar, heroes from last patch, I've seen Willow in competitive, I've seen a bunch of Lesh Track. You know, apparently Oracle and Winter Wyvern really high win rates. Uh, I'm not exactly sure about Winter Wyvern, but I know Oracle just having free amp heal or free amp spell, just really strong free shit from facets. Um, a lot of facets are situational. I feel like the ones that just give you bonuses are really strong. Like for instance, CM, I played her with the cast range plus AOE bonus facet. That just felt really strong. Like all of her abilities are just better. So these like all encompassing general passives or facets, I'm really enjoying them so far. So this is this kind of stuff we're monitoring on a new patch. I'm gonna keep you guys posted. I'm looking to do five, maybe six videos a week for the next week or two, just to really keep you guys up to date. The meta updates will slowly but surely come out less frequently because the meta only develops so fast. But this is what I've seen so far in my games. Picking and choosing your facets carefully, seeing what people are going for is absolutely essential. In my opinion, a lot of these heroes are defined by the facet that they take. Last but not least, I've seen Great King has a really high win rate with both facets based on Yoda buff and his win rate. So I want to try him with both of those facets at some point. I think this meta is going to be pretty much playing the map the same. A lot of the strong items are still strong. They didn't really change much about the game. Let's not overly freak out about all the shit that's going on. I really think if you have a good grasp of what your hero does with the map remaining the same, then this map, this patch will be way less overwhelming. So kind of take take it in stride, you know, take it when you lose to heroes or die to heroes that you didn't expect um, to do things that they didn't used to do. Take that in stride, but it's going to cost you a lot less games if you're just playing your hero efficiently. I'm just going to reiterate that as many times as I can during this video. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll maybe see you tomorrow for yet another 10.36 minute update. Thanks for watching. What?